Well, man, you played Vienna in Prague. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to get in there, but yeah. Yeah, all right. It's we went, early on, but all right. We cool. went on a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need this. <laughs> we went on a Croydon mini tour for two days and we played in Vienna and the day after we played in Prague. So yeah, it was a very eventful weekend. I can't go into details. I can. So, <laughs> no, really can't. <laughs> but it was a good crew. Peach's got our keys, so we're going to get the keys. I guess I decided to move to the UK mainly because of music, even though the priority was not coming here to do music or play music. It's the way that music is seen like so respectfully here in the UK that really made me think, okay, maybe that's the place for me. Music definitely helped me to connect with people when my English was too bad to even be able to introduce myself and my friends can tell you the struggle of like me preparing things to say before leaving the house and you know getting ready. But when I went to Outlook for the first time, it's what made me think that even though I couldn't speak English, I could have actually, you know, still had a good life here and learn because people will get me. <laughs> so if I'm doing a set by myself, it usually starts from one or two tunes that I have in mind that I know for a fact that that's the kind of like mood or that survived that I want to share with people. And as you know, like I bounce between tempos and genres, so kind of try to take the ravers with me on the journey and kind of keep things interesting. So I do kind of go with the crowd in a way, but I do have a direction in my head. I need to be organized and prepared about stuff, but sometimes when I don't overthink it, it turns out to be perfect. Great in Eva Google Present in Room 2 at Fabric was an amazing experience that I'm gonna definitely remember for a long time. I'm very grateful for the whole thing. It just still feels a bit surreal, to be honest. I definitely always saw myself doing something music related, but I always thought it was gonna be more, not something more like having a label or like finding talents. The shift was a thing when I moved to the UK, and I think Flavor D is it was my trigger, funny enough, because we didn't even do the same thing. But there was something about this girl that was kind of like, I don't know, I could kind of relate somehow. I only realized it recently that it was probably her that made me feel that way. She was like very, you know, tomboy, like, turn up in a truck suit with a hat, don't give a shit, just smash it and leave. And I was like, yo, I, can't, I could see myself doing that. Representation is important because of that because, you know, seeing people that look like you doing something that you want to do make it, like, so much more accessible. So our flatmate in my first house in London had turntables. This Italian dude was playing techno. And me and Julia would buy records and, you know, we'd just go back home, be drunk in the evening, just, like, have a little spin. We didn't have a clue, like, we didn't know what we were doing. Then he eventually moved out, so that's when Virtual DJ came in the picture. And I was like, well, I can learn on this little shitty software on my big iMac. I, would, I used to wrap a scarf on top of it so I couldn't see the lines with the bit. And I was getting obsessed, like I'm the same now. If I'm obsessed with over a blend, like it takes me maybe a week to figure it out, I'll still do it. When I started producing at NTS, that changed the game for me. So I would finish my shift at like 2 a.m., let everyone out and then lock myself in and like leave the studio at like, I don't know, 6, 7 a.m. and just mix and mix and mix and mix on my own with friends, with strangers, or maybe mostly on my own, really. And yes, I swear, I was on my own. <laughs> I'm on something. <laughs> Mixing, I definitely polished my skills at NTS and watching, you know, Grand Mixer, AG, that I was producing for three years, basically. It was fun, like, I would do it again. If I had a studio still, I would do it still the same. Like, it was just the best. Ah! 
How's it going? I'm good, how are you? Good time. <laughs> that, like your house. There's loads of recycled bins and the mattress on top. <laughs> and the time, literally, not even the time to get on the board, it was like, what do you want to drink? I was about to do something very stupid on that one. How did we meet? I think uh, we bumped into each other in like a few days yeah. and stuff. But I remember the first time we actually had the conversation was at Outlook. Uh, before getting on a boat. We were okay. just like... What year is that? Ages ago, maybe like 2015, 2014. 2015, 14, yeah, is it that long? Something like that. But we just had like a random chat where I was yeah. like, whoa, Pox remembers who I am. And I was like, woo! <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I think I started taking photos for you and Untype. And then you were like, will you come and do my radio show? Oh yeah, so Pox came to my second ever radio show. When I didn't have a clue about what I was doing. My English was way worse than it is now. And you know, I had no experience as a host or anything. And then the rest is history. I think the reason why I wanted to work with you so much from, from so quick was it was just flooded with producers who, who wanted to play. And I think there's a very, very big difference between a DJ I don't know, a producer who DJs. Louder for the people in the back. There's a real big difference. Between, no, but you know what I mean? So I think the fact that you weren't sort of this comment we were talking about earlier when you were playing me some of your beats, you're not like trapped in, oh, well, these people expect to see me do this. To me, you were just kind of like tapped into sort of a much wider spectrum of what was going on and you wanted to be there. Yeah, you weren't like a young white dude. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You and Viewer did the um, Eastern Electric show. Oh, yeah. And obviously, I came and played with you guys at. Oh, yeah. That was first. Like, the Five okay, Miles show. Okay, probably was first, the first it? big show we played together yeah. was at Five Miles for a Saturday night. It was actually one of my first big gigs. Like, I, I don't think I've ever been that nervous. I think I'm, I threw up before. No, maybe not, <laughs> but almost. And then we got to the venue, and obviously, it was you and the SP. Yeah, yeah. No pressure. We were playing at like <laughs> 2 30, something like that. And me and Anna were doing the switch from 142 to our yeah, time, yeah. but we didn't tell you. Yeah. And it was so perfect the way it went. I'm so happy. Because although I planned, there is a clang <laughs> in that show. One. There is a clang in that show. But although I planned, we switched from 140 to our time. And it was, <laughs> I remember you being like, uh. oh. All right, and it was just like <laughs> flawless, and it was a very big, I it's think it was a very good show. Yeah, it was a really good show. I mean, I think if we perform together, I perform better. Like, you saw us playing at Fabric, like the fact that you were there, it just made it so much easier for me. So much easier. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah, okay. it's not like I never told you before. Cheers. <laughs> I love playing. I told you before, it's true though. Your fabric live night. See, I think the way you cooked it was just like perfect. The recipe was amazing. I hope you're proud of yourself, man, because I think you absolutely like done yourself a massive like. I think you it was a big it. statement. Yeah, it was. And yeah, I'm proud. Um, as you say, there was a lot of work that went into that night. A lot of stress. I'm a very anxious person already, so imagine when there is, you know. More of that, or just, like the more you add to it, obviously the more stress you get. But then when I saw everyone smiling in the crowd, all my people in the booth having time of their life, I was like, you know what, it's all worth it in the end. And on top of that, everyone was amazing. It was important for me to book these people because as you, like, if you follow what I do, you know, I'm in between a lot of different styles. And I feel like it's very important because I feel influenced by each, every one of them. And when me and Anna play that back to back fabric, Probably the first time that I didn't really have to pay as much attention of, you know, what what she was going to play and what she was going to do because we were so much in the zone, both of us at the same level that I was just like dancing, you know, I was having a laugh with you while she was mixing, yeah. but I wasn't thinking like, oh my god, what are we going to do next? Like, what tempo we are? Because we went literally all over the spectrum. So she would just look at me and be like, yeah. 145 now, and yeah. I'm like, sick. Yeah. Just go with it, like no paranoid, no stress, nothing. It was so like instinctive. It was. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, like you say, you in the, in the box it was just vibes and it felt so polished. It seemed as if you'd been doing that together 
for the longest. That was one of the best sets I've ever played at Fabric, for sure. For sure, like, for sure. It was amazing. I'm yeah. never going to forget that night and that set. that we're talking about specifically bass music it's a bit hard to make things equal still to this day i can see things are slowly changing but we need to remember that if you start today you can't expect to be treated like you know the people that have been grafted in for like i don't know how many years so i feel like it's very important to remember that but we do want to make sure that the industry is more approachable as a woman i always felt i had to prove it that, that I deserve to be there. Whether, like, you know, if you're a boy and you play a shit set, there is a good chance that, you know, oh, yeah, you were just pissed and it's fine. You know, like, even about me and books, how many things were like, oh, so your books are, have a thing, that's why I books you. And I was like, you're my fucking mentor, what are you talking about? Like, how do you even think about that? Because, you know, for people, it's just like, if you are a woman, there is a good chance that if you are involved in something, you're probably banging the, the promoter basically, mm. which is crazy. The music that's written suffers from a narrow demographic and it's not very diverse. 100%. You know what I mean? And that's when things just start to be just churning out the same. I read a tweet the other day that made a lot of sense. It was like, I can see there is uh, improvement in terms of like diversity in the lineups and like in the people on the stage and behind it. But in terms of crowd, yeah, the crowd is mainly like white and male. For the start you play, as you want to play and you're not beholden to like things that we've already said in this interview you're feeling like how you have to play a set or you might yeah. switch up too much the way the way i think you diversify the dance is by doing what you want to do as you want to do it you vote with your feet and we that works both ways you know what i mean we present how we want to present and that's why we've been booked to be here and hopefully that's why you bought a ticket to come <laughs>